everybody. Welcome to today's event, Going Social in Wisconsin, How the City of Altoona Manages Its Reach and Benefits from Its Records. And it's presented by the Center for Digital Government and Government Technology in partnership with our great partner, Archive Social. Now, my name's Morgan Wright. I'm a senior fellow here at the Center for Digital Government. I'm also a senior advisor to the U.S. Congress House Science, Space, and Technology Committee and the Subcommittee on Research and Technology. Trust me, it's much more fun to be here with you folks. Uh, so trust me, we're going to have fun. You guys are going to love this. Now, the Center for Digital Government is a national research and advisory institute on information technology policies and best practices in state and local government. Now, we have a diverse and dynamic set of programs and services, and we provide public and private sector leaders with all the decision support, knowledge, and opportunities to help you effectively incorporate these new technologies into the 21st century, and social media is one of these new uh, applications that takes advantage of these technologies. So we're going to talk about that today. Now, I'm excited to be the moderator today. We're going to be doing this for the next 60 minutes. So just uh, set your timers. We'll be done here right at the top of the hour. Now, before we begin, just a couple of brief housekeeping notes. A recording of this presentation will be in emailed to everybody within 48 hours. So if you have any questions or if you miss something, have to get up, you get uh, interrupted, don't worry about it, folks. We're going to send this out to you. It's designed to be interactive. Now, we have a Q&A button down at the bottom. Folks, you're going to want to use that Q&A button because I know when we go through this presentation, we always get lots of questions. Make sure you get yours in there so we can get to it at the end of the presentation today. Now, send in your questions as they come up. We'll get to as many as we can. You can also download a PDF of the slides for today's presentation by clicking on Webinar Resources widget down at the bottom of the console. Now, also during today's webinar, just make sure if you're going to tweet it out, shout it out, put it on Facebook, LinkedIn, just use the hashtag GovTechLive to connect with uh, your friends across the government technology platforms of your choice. Now, at the close of this, we're going to have a brief survey about the presentation. We love to hear what you think. And believe me when I say that, we have made changes, we've made improvements, we've brought on topics because of your suggestions. So please, if you can't stay, click the survey widget at the bottom and launch it before you go. Otherwise, it will pop up once the webinar concludes. Now, at this time, we recommend you disable any of your pop-up blockers. If you get any media player issues or have any other problems, we have a webcast help guide. Just click help at the bottom. We also have Cody from our crack staff at On24. Uh, he'll be there to make sure he can answer any of your technical questions. Now, the best part, joining me today to discuss this very timely topic are Ann Lean. She's the social media manager at the city of Altoona. Roy Atkinson, he's a management analyst and power user in social media, as you'll find out here at City of Altoona. And Anil Chavla, founder and CEO of Archive Social. Always great when we get the founder and the CEO of the company to come on with us. So let's talk about what we're going to do here today very quickly. Um, we've already done the intros. I'm going to go over just a brief slides just to set the stage so we show you that social media is not as complicated as you think. Anna and Roy are going to come on and just knock it out of the park talking to you guys about managing reach and benefit from the records. Anil is going to come on. This, folks, this is a very interesting discussion about the legal aspects of social media use. There are always legal aspects, and then we're going to get to the Q&A at the end. So let's dive in real quick, because for most people, when we say we want to manage social media, this is what you think. You see, oh, it's complicated. I can't do it. It's really tough. What are we going to do? Folks, it's really not that complicated. The reason I say it's not complicated, there aren't very many things holding you back from doing this and doing this right. In fact, the only big thing holding you back is you. I mean, you don't. sometimes you don't know the processes, the tools, the best practices, the policies. What should we be doing? So we're going to show you that, hey, it's very easy. If that dude can do it, um, folks, I guarantee you that you can do it. There's just a few things, just a few do's. Just a few don'ts. We're going to cover those today. For example, can you delete a post? Under what circumstances can you delete a post? Can you uh, moderate comments? Can you block people? You know, what are all the legal ramifications? We're going to get into things like that and some of the do's. You know, hey, should we post this kind of things? How can we interact better with the community? You're going to get all of that stuff today because our goal is to turn you into social media superheroes. So with that being said, let me kick this off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a couple of the bios first to you. Let me read you just a little bit about Anne and a little bit about Roy, and then we have our first um, poll question that's going to come up. So Anne has nearly 30 years of experience spread across the legal and municipal government industries and is a co-founder of the nonprofit Altoona Compassion Coalition. Joining her as her partner in crime today is going to be Roy Atkinson. Now, Roy's a 26-year-old management analyst for the city of Altoona, and he began employment in Altoona as part of the International City Managers Association Local Government Management Fellow Program. Now, before I read you the rest of their bios, let's go to our first poll question today. Now, uh, make sure that you uh, – I'm going to read the rest of the bios, but you're going to have plenty of time to vote. So the first poll question is, what is your opinion on social media as a public record? Do you think it's definitely a public record by law? 
It might be a public record, but your activity is not worth retaining. You feel strongly that it is not a public record, or you don't know. So it's definitely a public record by law. It might be a record, but our activity is not worth retaining. You feel strongly it's not a public record, or you don't know. And while those things are coming up, let me read to you the rest of the bios for our two presenters today. So Ann Lean understands the, va uh, the value of clear and concise communication, whether it's synthesizing legal documents into digestible client communications or utilizing social media to bring City Hall to the community and knows what it takes to boil complicated ideas and issues down to the brass tacks to engage citizens. Now, currently, Ann is the administrative assistant for the City of Altoona, Wisconsin. She is an alumnus of The Ohio State University in Columbus, Ohio, and Glenville State College in Glenville, West Virginia. And folks, trust me, from our pre-call, I can tell you, Ann is not shy about revealing her status as a Buckeye for life and takes advantage of every opportunity to shout, OH. And if you guys know that, you know that she also wants to dot the I someday. Now, let me finish telling you about Roy. Roy, before he arrived in Altoona, he was selected as a Michigan Local Government Association Summer Fellow in 2015 with the City of Clare, Michigan, and served as City Management Intern with the City of Bay City, Michigan. Is that the home of the Bay City Rollers? We'll have to find out. He holds a BA in Political Science from Saginaw Valley State University and a Master's in Public Administration from Central Michigan University, and he holds deep interest in city communications, parks, and recreation management, and public engagement, and he is an active member of both the International and Wisconsin City Managers Association and the Engaging Local Government Leaders. So as they say, let's go to the scoreboard and see what we came up with in terms of our uh, survey. So it looks like, uh, you know, Anna Roy, 68% of folks, which is good, think it's definitely a public record by law. About 6% think it may be a record, but their activity is not worth retaining. 4% feel strongly that is a public record, and 21% don't know. Well, that's a good start to get going. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to turn it over to you folks, and the floor is yours. Good afternoon. This is Ann uh, from the city of Altoona. Um, I'm happy to be here this afternoon, and I'm happy to be in Altoona. Altoona has been the fifth fastest growing city in Wisconsin um, this past year, past two years, but in the past uh, four years, we've remained in the top five. Uh, we're doing something right here. Our population is 7,345. Um, our population growth has increased a little under 10% over the past 10 years. Um, we're the heart, in the heart of the Chippewa Valley. Our closest neighbors are the city of Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls. And Altoona is the, a train town USA, which is part of its history. Union Pacific Railroad gave us this designation in 2015 because Altoona got here because of the railroad. Um, the origins of our social media use um, Started in 2011, I saw it as an avenue to reach out to citizens and, and engage them. However, city management was reserved about this. How do we use it? And so our accounts sat uh, stagnant for three, three years um, until the buy-in came in when Altoona saw explosive growth, and it was a way to reach citizens. Um, in December 2014, we merged some Facebook accounts that we created. We had created them just to, as placeholders for names. Uh, that was on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and once we merged those accounts, we were ready to roll. It was a bit scary because we, you know, it was new, a new way for municipal government to communicate with people. Um, in 2015, we expanded on that platform using YouTube channel and LinkedIn. And then in the summer of 2016, Roy joined us with an ambitious plan uh, to promote Altoona. And um, I'm going to pass this off to Roy because he's going to share what he has done for us. So this is Roy Atkinson, Manager Analyst with the City of Altoona. Um, and yes, to answer your question, uh, Bay City is the home of the Bay City Rollers. There's a great story behind that. I'd suggest that you go and look it up on Wikipedia. Um, we, so shortly after I joined the city, we, you know, I, I realized really quick that we had social media um, and that we could do a lot more. And in my previous stops um, so far, I've stressed communications in each each city. Uh, one city, Bay City, um, I wrote a communications plan for them. We 
we've, we've really looked at social media there, and you know, so it kind of led into this position. We we looked we looked at social media very closely, um, and we we designed a platform to focus our our efforts on social media and e-communications. Um, we recognized that we needed to make changes to our website, so we did that. We made a connect section where we could showcase all of our city accounts that we have. Um, so basically, we put our inventory out there and make it easier for our citizens to join our social media and see what we were going to be putting out there. We began to stress an engaged and connected community. And, you know, they had set up this, this kind of um, element before I got to Altoona. But for me, it was really driving it home. And, and to do that, we had to up our posts. So frequently posting on social media, it's important. We established a two-post-a-day rule for our city page. So what we do in Altoona, we seek to inform the community of everything Altoona. I mean, this extends to city events, happenings, information, and news. We get the word out. If there's a, a great story or great thing going on in Altoona or in the area, we get that information out there. It can come from residents, regional entities, community groups, businesses, locations, etc. If there is something about Altoona that, that we think is great, we put it out there. We started uh, tagging groups more exclusively. We started really defining these groups that have a social media presence in the city. So in doing so, we started connecting our citizens with our citizens, and we started connecting them with the existing groups that we have in the community. And this really fostered a deep sense of community and through e-communication. So as I explained, we had our Connect page on the website. Um, people could go to that, and they could link up with us. Another important element and the thing we do is we try to tell a story. This is incredibly important. With anything we do, it's, we're trying to tell the story of, of Altoona and the great things that are happening here. One thing we came up with early on is the concept of one Altoona, Wisconsin. There is only one Altoona, Wisconsin. They, there are actually several Altoonas across the country, and we are constantly getting um, mistook in, or for those cities. And we have people calling all the time asking, hey, is this Altoona, Pennsylvania? Is this Altoona, Iowa? No, this is Altoona, Wisconsin. There is only one Altoona, Wisconsin. So this is going to become a, a big concept for our city. Um, we're trying to push out this hashtag one Altoona, Wisconsin. So our social, current social media accounts. We utilize a vast array of different social media platforms, as you can see with the graphic um, to the right. We have a general city account that we use as sort of a, an information vacuum. So all of the information that's put out from our city departments, we share it on the city page. And we'll, we'll draw from those area groups or other Facebook pages within um, the city. We have several departmental accounts across the board. I think our superstars are our police department and our public library. Um, every other department is, is working on their strategy currently. We are considering expanding uh, to other platforms, such as Nextdoor, Pinterest, and, and we're also pushing the use of Instagram. We, we believe Instagram is amazing, and it really showcases a visual element of what we're doing. Okay, so of late, Altoona has seen a social media subscription growth that is just amazing. As you can see currently there on this graphic, um, in May we had 742 Facebook likes for our page. It since went up to, the previous graphic shows 1,121. As of today, we have 1,178 likes. In the last week, we had over 50 50 plus likes to our page. Um, so it just, this is a testament that people are getting more and more con connected with the city and they want to know more. On Twitter, we've also had a, a steep rise on Instagram, which we created for the city. We've had, we have over 100 followers and we have steady growth on that as well. So 
So in moving forward, what we will continue to do, we're always looking for different ways to communicate with our citizens um, through any kind of concept. We're going to really be focusing on community outreach and both in person and through e-communication. Social media is fluid. It's ever-changing. There's always something new out there, and we have to be able to grasp those new concepts and run with them. So that means looking at different platforms. We should always be seeking input from our citizens, and this is what we're going to continue to do. We've seen a spike in the number of, of people that want to know more about our community and are trying to be engaged more with our city. So we're, we see it as a great avenue. And not a lot of people like coming to city council meetings, you know, so if, or to come visit us in person. So if we can hit this corner and we can reach them through e-communication, we're going to do it. And we're going to keep being this, that community connection. We're going to be linking the city to different groups and trying to reach out to our citizens. We're going to keep doing surveys. You know, I put on here surveys, surveys, surveys. We're currently doing a public safety survey. We put it out, and before we could even release a press release, one of the local news stations was here, and they interviewed us yesterday. You can see that on our, our city Facebook right now. We're going to continue using pictures. We think the visual element is important to show what we're doing. And we're going to continue to use more videos, both live and static. It takes a team. So recently, city staff convened a social media team of all the um, social media managers for the city. So each department that has, you know, that has a page, the person that runs that page convened, and we're, we're starting a coordinated approach um, to work on our social media. So we're trying to drive home one El Tuna, and it's important. We have deep staff buy-in. We all are passionate about social media and we think it's important. And we, this is serving as more of an incubator of ideas for our organization, how we can run things differently, and how we can have a, a better reach into our community. It's so very important. And so with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Ann. Okay, so in November of... Uh 2015, the uh, Attorney General of Wisconsin, Attorney General Brad Schimmel, um, put out a publication called Wisconsin Public Records Law Compliance Guide. But before that, um, did I understand that using social media, I was creating a public record? And yes, I did. And uh, before this official announcement from the Attorney General, I uh, would screenshot things and save them. Fortunately, uh, I would say that we had some activity, but not a lot, so it wasn't cumbersome. But once um, it was recognized by the state as an official record, we figured we had to find a way to save it easily and uh, efficiently. So, um, We did some research, and uh, by February, we were signed up with Archive Social, um, which has been a great tool for us. The value of Archive Social is it saves time and money and equates to reduce labor costs when we consider the old way of the capturing the screenshots. Um, another value of uh, this archiving of our social media is it, we're confident that it's there and um, there's no concerns about it. Um, even if we delete a record, because uh, we've had to delete a few things from our Facebook page, some comments that weren't, um, uh, I say cool, but using foul language or directed at a person. Um, we do have a terms of use policy on there that says that we have the right to do that. But however, um, we still have that record, even though it was deleted from Facebook. We, we have it stored on Archive Social, which allows us the ability, in case there's a 
request uh, for public records, we can, we can produce that through Archive Social. Um, storage capability, we don't have to keep it here at City Hall. Um, it's online. Uh, we, we have that capability without being cumbersome here in our uh, devices that we have here. Um, I like the ability that Archive Social affords us to find things. And currently, we have several things going on out there. And um, this is a way, when we go into Archive Social, we can print reports and target certain things or certain topics. And if someone did a public records request, we could easily uh, produce that for them. Um, I think I'm very satisfied with, with this platform, and I'm confident in the ability for us to respond to public records requests and produce things that we need to operate and be able to respond to citizens. You know, and we've used it to go into and just do keyword searches, and you know, we use it uh, from time to time to go in if we need to find something. It's a great tool otherwise for posting, you know, information. If we need to go back into the record, and find something we did in the past, and you know we posted in the past. It's an easy tool um, to find a to find anything really. So with that, uh, thank you for for listening. You know, contact us anytime, and we have our emails here, and we have a, a link to our website as well. Just remember, there's only one Altoona, Wisconsin. So thank you for your time and. And so, thanks. Um, we're going to hand it off to Morgan. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. And actually, real quickly, hey, I'll run the slides here. So there you go. Um, let's just leave this here for a second, guys. Wow, we're missing a slide. There we go. So um, apologies there. If you need to contact them, there's their slides right there. Um, there's their email addresses. I'll leave that up there for a second. Uh, if you guys want to copy that, if not, get a hold of us later. We'll get you the information when it comes out. So now I have the great pleasure to introduce Anil Chavla. Anil is the co-host of the GovTech Social Podcast and the founder and CEO of Archive Social. But again, as before I finish reading the rest of his great bio, let's get to our next poll question and see what you folks think about this one. So how is your agency currently retaining records of social media? First, you're not retaining your own records and rely on the networks such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you take manual captures, screenshots, copy and paste. That's old school, folks, but is that what you do? Do you take manual captures? We use a personal backup tool like Backupify or Social Safe, something along that line. You use an automated solution for archiving, or you're already a happy archive social customer. So you're not retaining records and rely on the networks. You take manual captures. You use a personal backup tool. You have an automated solution or you're a happy archive social customer. And while you're voting, let me read to you the rest about Anil. Now, Anil, um, Archive Social is the public sector's leading provider of technology to help government agencies archive and manage risk related to social media. As you'll see, there's going to be a lot of risk. It's just not posting things. Um, archive Social has enabled hundreds of government entities, such as in Wisconsin, the city of Eau Claire, and Washington County, and the world's largest law firm, the United States Department of Justice, to retain records of social media for legal protection and public records requirements. Now, the company was selected for the prestigious Code for America Accelerator in 2013, recognized in 2014 as a cool vendor by leading analyst firm Gartner, and honored as a GovTech 100 company in both 2015 and 2016 by Government Technology Magazine. And most recently, folks, and this is the cool part, Archive Social collaborated with the White House to launch a historic social media archive of President Obama's uh, 44th presidency. So with that being said, let's get to this cool stuff, folks. So hang on, hang on tight with us here. And real quickly, I know some of you folks were having issues with the screen. Make sure you hit F5 and refresh. We're watching this from our end as though you're watching it. We haven't seen any issues. But if you have anything, get back with us on that. Just make sure you hit F5 to refresh. So let's go to the results here real quick. So, Anil, it looks like 72% of the folks are not retaining records. That's one of the highest numbers we've seen in terms of our webinars we've done. 10% uh, are taking manual captures. 3% use a personal backup tool. Um, about 12% use an automated solution. And 3% are already happy archive social customers. So I think that top one really says a lot, and that will be, I know, something you'll be interested to dig into. So, Anil, let me turn this over to you. The floor is yours. 
Well, Morgan, thank you so much for the introduction there, and also uh, a big thank you to both, both Roy and Anne for your participation. You're right, there is only one Altoona, Wisconsin, and congratulations to, to you both on the social media growth in the city. Uh, from your presentation, there's, there's one key takeaway, uh, and I know there's a lot of takeaways out of that, uh, out of that, that I'm sure our audience have. One key takeaway from me that, that segues us to this portion of the presentation was that, that early part of your social media endeavor where you had the profiles but they weren't quite being used, and there wasn't enough process, there wasn't a methodology. And it's really great to see the methodology that you both put in place for the city, um, and, and now it's working well for you. So in terms, of, in terms of methodology and process, there are a lot of issues to consider. You do have to have a process and approach to social media for your strategy to succeed. And as a government agency, as Anne touched on, there are other policies and legal issues to take into account. And so this is what takes us to the archiving component of this present presentation. We're talking about records. Uh, it's really nice to hear from Anne uh, how record keeping is not only providing that public records compliance, but also providing other benefits in terms of being able to find content. And my goal at this point in the presentation is to deep dive into that issue of record keeping. Really nice to see that about 20, 25% of you are doing something today in terms of record keeping. Uh, I do hope that I can shed some more light on, on the issues uh, that, that, are that agencies are encountering in this space to validate the time and effort you're putting into record keeping. And then for the 70% of you that do not have an approach to record keeping yet, uh, I want to do my part in painting a clear picture on, on why this is an important topic, why there should be urgency for, for doing something about it, and, but I also want to present you with a way to think about it. So there's not just one way to solve this problem, as we saw from that last poll. So I want to arm you with, with edu information on this topic and allow you to make a decision on how your agency can, can both meet records requirements and, and protect your agency and also have these benefits of, of records, as, as Anne touched on, Anne and Roy touched on. So that's a nutshell my agenda. Please do use the Q&A and ask questions. We are going to save some time at the end to answer them. But I'm going to dive right in to this issue of public records. Now, and in her presentation mentioned in Wisconsin that not only is there the public records law, not only was there awareness about social media generating public records, but that additional guidance then came out in terms of how to truly comply and I wanted to point you at this resource. This is a resource that, that we've put together, Archive Social, that's a free resource that essentially consolidates the information from each state in one map. And so you can go to this, this map, uh, click on your state, and see what your state has said, both at the public records level in terms of the law, as well as at the level of the Secretary of State's office or the state archives in terms of clarifying on how to fulfill the law. Uh, again, we're channeling the information from your state agencies. Uh, as a resource uh, to, to help uh, everyone keep up to date with, with this issue, because it has been an emerging issue. Social media has taken off quite quickly in government and as it is around the world. Uh, but today, uh, it is, is well established that social media does, uh, the, the use of social media does generate public records. So going back to that first poll, I know about 20% of you are wondering, uh, we're not really sure if this is a record or not. Uh, so th these resources can provide quite a bit of guidance on that. Uh, from a state law perspective and a state guidance perspective. But I also want to play my part in giving you um, some more clarity. And, and by the way, this, this is something that you will receive uh, after this presentation in order to go to this map. But you can also go to this URL on the screen, bit.ly slash records and navigate to your state guidance. So I also want to do my part in this presentation to not only point you to the, the, law, the legalese, uh, and the guidance, which of course you should look at, which of course is very helpful. But I also want to give you a clear picture of what's happening day to day in government and how government agencies are using social media in a way that generates records. And particularly those of you who are on social media may even uh, feel that the, the law academically says that social media generates records, but you're not sure if your social media is generating public records. Here are a few examples that uh, can help you think about your own agency's use of social and help you determine uh, the, the level at which uh, today you are generating records and, and perhaps the, the need to, to take action in terms of record keeping. And the first example comes from the emergency management space. Uh, without question, we have seen uh, probably for about four, four years now, four or five years, that social media is the most effective, efficient way to disseminate public safety information in the time of a crisis. The example I have here is from Orlando, uh, and we all know that last year uh, the nation experienced a number of, of uh, truly devastating uh, incidents 
that reached national news. This was obviously one of the bigger incidents, uh, the worst mass shooting in the history of the United States. So a really uh, tough subject to talk about, but I like to highlight it because it, it you know, the, the, that incident happened. Uh, that, that, that's something that we all have to, uh, that, that, that we all uh, deal with at different levels. Sometimes there are, there, there are big crisis situations, sometimes they're small. But without question, again, social media is a silver lining in these situations, and, and Orlando is a perfect example of that. No, no matter how horrific that circumstance, the police department knew what they needed to do, and immediately in the middle of the night knew that they had to keep the public informed. They had to disseminate the information. They had to also reduce the burden on themselves. They knew that this would catch uh, a lot of attention. And so they used Twitter to get this, this information out to say, no email or phone calls, please. We'll provide updates over Twitter. And so I really want to applaud the Orlando PD in that circumstance for, for the transparency they had and the importance they put on social media. And we see that day in and day out with agencies across the country. Uh, and taking this back to records, of course, in the time of an emergency, we are putting out important information in real time. Records are being generated. Uh, on the flip side, I have an example here that's not from a, a real-world uh, physical crisis, I should say, uh, at least um, not to the extent that, that something like, like a mass shooting or a weather event creates, but it was a crisis nonetheless. And this is actually an incident where a woman duct-taped her dog's mouth, put it on her ho own personal Facebook page, but then she had location tagged the city of South Daytona, even though she no longer lived there. Now, the city of South Daytona, if you're not, if you're not familiar with it, is a small town of about 12,000 population. They post a few times a week to their social media. So, so they have a social media presence, but it's not terribly active. But when this w photo was posted online, it went viral, and the, uh, the uh, residents of the city of South Daytona were outraged. So they immediately went to social media and hounded the city on social media about this happening, saying, what are you doing about it? This is animal cruelty. How could, you, how could the police uh, you know, let this go? And, and of course, there's an outrage. And it led to more than 24,000 comments hitting this Facebook page in just a few days. Now, to their credit, City of South Daytona used social media to address the concerns, inform people that the law enforcement in the city was working with law enforcement across the country, and then provided regular updates about the situation until a woman was arrested. And by the end of it, social media had not only kept the citizens informed, not only uh, been, been a, uh, not only served as a great channel for the city to get the message out, but actually turned people's hearts and minds around to the point where the citizens were thanking the city and the police department for their incredible work helping track this, this person down. So again, a, a very uh, you know, a sort of crisis-like situation, uh, and it's very overwhelming. And in fact, national media was making records requests for that for that social media content. And we're dealing with 20, 30, 24, 25,000 comments. It's, it's quite a lot for a small town. But the records are being generated, and they were being asked for. And then finally, I'll take it out of the crisis uh, uh, segment of, of, of situations and talk about day-to-day. Day-to-day, uh, government's uh, fundamental purpose is serve the citizens. And as an agency, if you're on social media, uh, that's your frontline communication with your citizens. And so day-to-day, -day, there's customer service to, uh, to clarify information about events, answer questions, uh, receive reports from citizens, as we see in this example, and provide updates. And in all of that activity, uh, records are certainly generated. So again, we saw we see three examples of how social media is incredibly important, undeniably important, uh, but then because of it being important, generates records which are important for long-term transparency. Now, the next question that comes out of that is, well, okay, these records are being generated, but as we saw in the poll, about 70% of our, our attendees here today are relying on Facebook and Twitter to have that data. Uh, and you may ask, well, why, you know, why do we even have to worry about public records that's out on Facebook and Twitter? Who's asking for it? Well. Here's one, just one example uh, of a tweet. This is actually now from almost three years ago, from 2014, where a citizen uh, noticed that information um, that was supposed to be on a Twitter feed, they were following the, the police scanner, and the police, uh, in, the police department in Seattle had put together these Twitter feeds, which, was, which were supposed to reflect the same information on Twitter as they have on the police scanners. He was noticing that the Twitter feeds did not have the same information. There were some, some information missing. Maybe sometimes it was delayed. And so Twitter, Twitter's feeds, when he looked at it himself, were unreliable. So he actually tweeted this at the Seattle PD saying, I want the archives of all your tweets available, uh, and please consider this a Public Records Act request. So basically he made a public records request for social media using social media. So this is uh, truly a sign of the times and a sign of the times from three years ago. 
And so we have certainly seen an increase of these types of records requests where citizens say, I don't see what I thought I should, what, what, I, what I think I should still be seeing on, online, so give me your version of it. Now, we have seen that increase. We have many customers who have received records requests for Facebook and Twitter content. Uh, but more often than not, the records requests that we're seeing that involve social media are not directly asking for it, so they're not as obvious. So if you look at the bottom box here, these are the kinds of records requests uh, most agencies are used to receiving. Any and all documents, all notifications of the street closure, all emails and communications. What's changed is that social media has become a primary channel, and now when you see general language like this, all notifications might mostly refer to what you put out on social media. And so again, you have to think about responding correctly with the information that's being requested, even if it's not explicitly requested that you produce content from social. And finally, I want to give an example here. Uh, Morgan touched on this in my bio. I appreciate you doing that, Morgan. Uh, you may wonder, how big of a deal is this? Uh, well, it's such a big deal that the highest office in the land put significant energy towards this at the end of the Obama administration. Uh, we all know with uh, President Obama taking office in 2008, social media was just emerging. Uh, his White House was really the first White House to truly adopt social media. He's known as the first social media president. Uh, and had quite a presence on social media across many platforms. And one of the key initiatives at the end of the presidency was to fulfill the public records law that applies to the president, and that's called the Presidential Records Act. And so uh, the, uh, you know, several resources were put in that direction. We were honored to have the opportunity to assist with that records capture to uh, provide those records to the National Archives. And we were also honored to have the opportunity to create this archive, this open archive that any, any of you and any, any of us as citizens can visit to to review the records from the Obama administration. So again, a big deal at every level of government, and if you want to learn more, certainly check it out on our website. So let's come back now to this idea of, well, okay, even if they're asking for it, still isn't it, isn't it at least mostly on Facebook, isn't it mostly on Twitter? And I'll tell you that the, the, the data you hope would be on Facebook and Twitter, at least in the near term. So you post something today, I hope that tomorrow it's still on Facebook, and I hope that uh, within a few weeks, a few months, that what I post is still on Facebook. But that the issue is actually much broader than that. It's not just about what you post, but it's also about what you receive. The public records law applies equally to information received as it does to receive information sent. And it also can apply to information for more than just days and weeks, but certainly months and years, depending on the nature of the content. So we at Archive Social decided to study this issue in more depth. And one of the key concerns was what happens when data is deleted. Uh, and that's really something for, for you to understand is that if you today do not have a record-keeping approach in place, there is no guarantee that once something is deleted that you'll ever be able to access it again. Uh, in fact, if you go to Facebook's uh, page for law enforcement, it says on the law enforcement page that uh, if, if uh, law enforcement needs, to, needs access to certain records from Facebook, please issue a subpoena before information is deleted. So again, implying that once it's deleted, there's no way to access it. So we did this study to understand, well, how much information is truly disappearing, being deleted from these networks? And we ran this about a year ago, uh, January 2016. We'll actually be updating this here soon. But even from last year, this is quite compelling data, where we surveyed 400 different Facebook pages for public sector customers. And we surveyed that, those pages for just one month. Our technology can not only archive, but it can delete, detect deletions and, and, and mark them as such. And in one month, those 400 Facebook pages experienced nearly 7,800 deletions. So almost 20 a page in one month. So that was quite eye-opening even for us as an archiving company. We knew that we were providing value and had protected agencies, but to the extent of how much was being deleted, we weren't quite aware, and it was really, really amazing to see. And when we looked at the specific pages, three out of four of the pages had at least one deletion in a month, and some of the pages had dozens of deletions. Now again, as as uh, as, as, as many uh, agencies uh, will tell you, most, most of our customers do not delete. They, they try not to delete their own content. They try not to delete what citizens are saying. They try to hide it instead. But the information is being deleted because you have to remember the citizens can delete at any point in time. They can even delete their Facebook profile, for example. And that data can disappear and you can lose records that you're required to have without even knowing. So a really important thing for us, everyone to understand that, that uh, most states uh, are not coming out with guidance about social media being a record and advising that there's some way to export and have that data in your control. So let me just give you just a few case studies where this has proven to be a, a really valuable thing to do. Again, regardless of how you do it, and maybe even the screenshotting that Ann mentioned, 
having some record um, can, can truly protect your agency and ensure that you have the opportunity to leverage social media to its fullest in the long term. And so I want to provide three quick case studies, and then we'll talk about record keeping in general uh, in terms of uh, ways to archive that will be most effective uh, for, for an agency and ensure the highest level of protection. So let's look at some, some, some stories that, that may sound a little scary, but it's also uh, these are all happy stories because these agencies were proactive in terms of record keeping. We're able to weather that storm and move on. And we'll start with Margate, Florida, where a, a citizen was posting, uh, uh, basically promoting their own blog. They were, were essentially spamming the city's pages with promotions for their own blog. And the city had a policy, just like Altoona does, to remove content that violates the policy, uh, both if it's profane, but also if it's off-topic or commercial in nature. And they removed it, and the citizen actually came back and said, hey, you can't do that. This is Florida. We have a records law. And the city said, well, we do keep records, so we can enforce our policy because we've got the records. And then the citizen said, okay, well, I feel like you're singling me out. So the citizen issued a public records request for the past few months asking the city to produce evidence of everything that they had hidden or removed. Well, they had an archiving system in place, and they were able to do that and, and, and demonstrate, one, that they had a policy that they, were, they had the right to enforce, two, that they kept the records uh, uh, even, even if content was being removed, uh, and three, that they were operating in a very consistent fashion. And once they produced information, uh, no harm, no foul, and they were able to move on, and that's exactly the situation that you want to be in as an agency. Uh, because as a government agency, you're so critical to people's lives. As you know, uh, social media are not. Government faces legal challenges and lawsuits and requests. Uh, and being able to, to have in place the things you need to have in place and demonstrate that is so powerful for government to spend most of its time serving the citizens uh, and, and not being bogged down in, in trying to deal with these types of requests and, and legal situations. So a uh, similar example uh, in terms of records requests coming in uh, across the country in California uh, this is pretty interesting because this is a police department that all acknowledged that that social media was was probably you know public record they, they needed to do something about it, but they had never had an issue. Fortunately, uh, my team was able to get in touch with them and they, they decided that you know what we'll, we'll start a free trial uh, of your archiving solution. And actually, three weeks in, they had been running this gun buyback program in the city. Three weeks into our, the free trial with our product, they received a records request from the National Rifle Association. So this time, instead of a single citizen, this is a powerful organization. And the NRA, of course, has every right to make this request. This is a controversial issue. And fortunately, they had the archive in place. They were able to use the archiving technology to search and produce the content uh, and respond to the records request, and nothing came out of it. And that's exactly what you want. So I said similar situation, meaning that they're prepared, they produce the content, and 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 no, and and no problems out of it. But if you look at this case study, you'll see how the officer who received the request uh, reacted. He he said that without some kind of archiving solution in place, uh, he would have spent countless hours scrolling through Facebook and would have likely produced information that was incomplete. So uh, again, being proactive really paid off. And finally, I want to take this to the northwest corner of the nation and give you an example outside of public records. It's not just about public records, but because social media touches everything that you do, it's, so, it's just so fundamental in, in how a city, county, or agency communicates, it can unfortunately also then find its way into any kind of legal situation that government's used to seeing. In this case in Spokane, this is from a few years ago, a few years ago now, I believe in 2013, where uh, the city had helped promote a, a regular kayaking trip. And unfortunately, in, in one of those trips, a young man fell off the kayak and actually died of hypothermia. And so the, family's, uh, the family uh, of this young man uh, did, did file a lawsuit that included the city uh, alleging that, that this trip shouldn't have happened in these weather conditions. And in that lawsuit, the discovery request explicitly asked for two years of content from Spokane's Facebook pages related to the kayaking trip. So again, promoting a, a local event is something that pretty much every government agency does. Unfortunately, things can happen that lead to lawsuits and in a discovery request, the social media is pulled in. And so Spokane was one of the early adopters of social media archiving technology and able to respond to that request. And you can take a look at the government technology case study in regards to you know, what might have happened had they not had archiving in place, including the potential for fines because uh, this does then touch back to public records law where not only is a discovery request, but they should have had the records for public records and therefore could be subject to fines for not producing that content in time. 
So a lot of disaster averted there um, as, as agencies and, and, and government agencies in general have to deal with the types of issues that have always popped up, but now in the social age. So that hopefully creates some, some, some more clarity for folks who were wondering how social media could, be, could, could constitute a record, why this is important to, to address. And, and now what I want to do is arm you with some high-level guidance on how to think about record keeping. Uh, at the end of the day, any record uh, is better than no record, uh, even if that's copy and paste. But certainly, uh, social media archiving uh, technology is something to look at, just like you, you are, your agencies pro should be already archiving your email. Uh, now, in full disclosure, Archive Social is a social media archiving uh, technology company, but we're not the only one. So again, I want to provide you high, high, high guidance here on on the issues to think about, but of course automating this problem, as Anne, Anne pointed out, will actually reduce your costs, uh, not only helping you fulfill the requirements to a larger extent, but actually at a lower cost than doing it manually. So how do you think about this problem? Well, a few things to realize, and, and uh, uh, one thing I should say is that the audience here we have here today, I, I, I recognize that not all of you are in IT, and actually that's a good thing because uh, social media, unlike other content types in the past is something that, that's really more controlled by the communicators uh, in an agency than IT. It used to be that uh, anything you did was provisioned by IT. IT would give you an email account or SharePoint access or, or uh, you know, a shared folder, and IT would control it. But with social media, the communicators are the ones that are setting this up and uh, putting the credentials in and, and, and may not need any assistance from IT. So I want to provide all of you with this guidance of how to think about archiving because ultimately public records compliance and, and the protection of your agency is something that every, everybody in an agency holds as a responsibility. And there are four key factors uh, that we think about with social media uh, that are unique. So one is frequency. Uh, this refers to the fact that this data is outside of your control, so you want to get it in your control as quickly as possible. Comprehensiveness, this is about having as much of the content as possible. A uh, screenshot will give you some of the information, but not all of it, so I'll give you an example of what I mean there, particularly in terms of metadata. Authenticity is about uh, record keeping that actually serves a legal purpose. You want this to be evidentiary quality. If you're keeping these records uh, and they're finding their way into lawsuits, uh, social media is finding its way into lawsuits, then certainly your records should be able to support your case as evidence. So how do you ensure that you have authentic data? And then context is, uh, when it comes to record keeping, is, is uh, acknowledging the fact that this is not about storing data, it's about being able to produce it. And so think about a Facebook conversation that has hundreds or thousands of comments that happened three years ago. Uh, your, your archiving record keeping approach should be designed so that you can produce that information very easily and make sense of it with full context. So those are the four factors. I'm going to give you a few examples here as we wrap up of what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to talk about comprehensiveness first. And I mentioned this word metadata, which uh, has been in the public sphere uh, quite often because of the political discussions out there. Uh, but here's a clear example of what that means. Metadata is basically data that describes data. So if you look at a tweet, this is a 126-character tweet. Most of the data we think about is that, is that, that tweet's text, that 126 characters. The metadata is what really constitutes the full record. It has information about the tweet. When was it posted? The timestamps, the user IDs, location information. And in multiple states, um, in every state that has been uh, questioned, uh, metadata has been ruled to be as much a part of the public record as the content itself. So you have to think about metadata with social media, and screenshotting will actually not get you the metadata, and not all archiving solutions will get you the metadata. So something to consider there. I also want to point out that when it comes to archiving social media, it's quite different than email. There's really just one way to keep a record of an email, make a copy of it. Uh, that's not the same case with social media because you're dealing with getting the data out of Facebook and Twitter. These are living, breathing conversations. There's multimedia, live video. And so details, details, details matter with social media archiving. Uh, as you evaluate solutions, pay attention to the details. Um, I would urge you to trial any product that, 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 you're, that you're looking at or at least see some really clear examples of how they deal with the details. Things like comments that are, that are replies to other comments. Uh, the fact that comment threads can go on for hundreds or thousands of comments and making sure all that's still there. Uh, multimedia, not only in what you post, but in the comments that you get back. And live streaming is, is, is a, a really important tool these days. So ensuring that your archiving solution captures your live stream video. Um, and you know, all that comes back to that context piece I talked about. So here from that South Daytona example with the, the dog's mouth duct tape, here's one comment of the city of South Daytona responding. A lot of uh, traditional archiving solutions treat everything as independent records. 
So producing this one this comment might have been what you were looking for, but producing it alone really will not help you fulfill a records request uh, in a meaningful fashion. You really need the context of that conversation. So look for technology that can re reconstruct that conversation back to what post was it on, what were all the other comments around it, so you can make sense of it. And this is something that's important not only in the tool itself, but in how you present that information to who's requesting it, whether it's a journalist or an attorney, an interest group. Uh, ultimately, you may have the data, but if you cannot get the data to those, those requesters in an in a effective fashion, then it could lead to confusion, it could lead to back and forth, it could lead to risk. And so a best practice to look for in a social media archiving uh, approach is the ability to, uh, one, turn the content into PDF, which is a universal format that's uh, very visual, and two, look for a solution that can reconstruct that information. And so I want to give you this example from one of the case studies we just covered where uh, the, the uh, city of, of Margate had uh, that records request where the citizen was wondering what had been deleted. Well, on the left, you can see the PDF that was created for them. And while um, certain comments were deleted, we, we, we didn't want to just produce what was deleted because that doesn't give you enough information. So uh, look for technology that can reconstruct the entire conversation, as you see on the left, and then highlight the information that's most important, which is highlighting the information that was deleted. So that gives somebody a really clear picture and prevents that back and forth. So those are just some things to look for in a very effective uh, uh, approach to social media archiving uh, to protect your agency. I know we're about 10 minutes or 8 minutes out, so I'm going to fast forward straight to my contact information and turn it over to Morgan for questions. Well, great job, Anil. And folks, you know, um, there is still, we've got actually quite a few questions coming in, so we're going to walk through a lot of these questions as we can right now. But just remember, in case you missed anything, we will send out um, a PDF of the slides. You'll get a link to a replay of this. You'll get to see all this information. And the couple slides that Anil passed over, you will still get those in the PDF, so make sure you download those. So, hey, look, let's get to some questions. And uh, got a couple, actually, um, for you folks, Roy and Ann. And, and Anil, it was something you hit on about businesses putting it out. So we've actually had Tabitha Mayer from Morrison County and Sean Keene, um, from Village of Homer Glen actually pretty much asked the same question, which is how do you handle postings about businesses while avoiding favoritism or overreaching the city scope? That was Sean. And then Tabitha says about, you know, uh, questions sharing specific business events looking like they're favoring or promoting. So let me ask, start off with Roy and uh, Ann. How, are you folk, how do you folks handle the specific postings of businesses? And uh, do you have a policy or how do you handle that? So in terms of dealing with this, we're not – um, per se, um, sharing information regarding deals or, you know, the flavor of the week. Uh, we're putting stuff out there about the businesses that would, you know, celebrate um, some kind of notoriety or some kind of um, event that they may be having for their business, um, like a grand opening. So, like, here in Altoona, we have had a lot of businesses open recently. So we've had ribbon cutting ceremonies. Um, so if they're getting some kind of uh, positive, you know, press, we'll, we will share information. If it's if it's promoted from, uh, you know, a local news source, we'll, we'll share that news story. Um, so I mean, we're not going out there and we're not sharing their deals of the week or anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, great. It sounds like if there's a tie to specific economic development, which benefits the city or something like that, it seems like a good tie-in. So, again, folks, it goes back to um, policies. In fact, we had a good question here, uh, actually a couple questions on policy. So um, let's, let's do this one real quick, though, because, Anil, um, I know you mentioned it, and we had Linda Rhodes here from Livingston County Public Library ask, is archiving social media a state or federal law? Now, we know it's a state law because you've got that great resource, bit.ly slash uh, SM Public Records, I believe it was. But is there anything federal, or does this all rely just at the state level for people to follow the law? It is at both levels. Uh, it's at every level of government has a records law. So the federal level, I was talking about the presidency. There's the Presidential Records Act. There's the Federal Records Act. There's FOIA at the federal level. And then, of course, every state has the Open Records Act or Public Information Act or Public Records Law, whatever it's called in your state, uh, which then goes down to the local level. The law is really about... Uh, record retention, having some way to keep records, and of course archiving is the mechanism, um, whether it's email or social, on how to fulfill that requirement. 
And, um, and folks, as you see, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff there. So it goes back to make sure you know your state laws, make sure you got good policies. And speaking of policies, I know that um, Ann, you and Roy actually fielded a couple questions. Uh, one of these also came in from uh, Jenny, I believe it's COSEC, City of West Dallas, talking about your policies. Now, you've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got Instagram. So how do you handle your policies? Is it one policy for everything, a different policy for each platform? How do you folks in there's only one Altoona, Wisconsin, handle that? We have one policy that covers all our social media platforms. Uh, which gives us, it gives us the discretion to delete things that may be targeting a person or using language that's not appropriate um, uh, in the public arena. Um, and so we do have, at Terms of Use, it says that we have the option to delete. Um, we do save that record. We've deleted a couple of things. We save it first to archive social, and then we go and delete it. So we make sure we still have it uh, in case there's a public records request. And uh, actually, uh, I'm going to throw this one um, over real quick to Roy, because, Roy, I know you're a social media superstar there. So Carrie Wilkie, again, Bureau of Operations and Planning, asks, who takes your pictures for Instagram? Professional? Um, anyone? Do you guys get any guidance if they do take it around taking pictures for Instagram? Well, we we actually kind of get a um, uniform, I'd say, like vacuum of pictures. We have everyone in the organization. If something happens, there's an event, there's something happening around town. Um, you know, we'll pull pictures together, have them, you know, put in one place. Or, you know, it's not uncommon for me to randomly get an uh, an email from the city administrator saying, "Hey, look at this. Look what we did last night." You know, and and so I'll put pictures up. I mean, honestly, I, I love taking pictures. So if I'm walking around town and I see something awesome, I'll take a picture. And, you know, vice versa. I think you know, we've really started doing this a lot more in our organization. You know, if we see something awesome, we take pictures of it and we try and document it. Uh, we're, we're lucky to have our city hall uh, also within our public library. We're all in one building. So there's a lot of library programming, so it's not uncommon to see kids running around, having fun. And um, when Pokemon Go was was heavy this summer, we had we had a lot of people here at City Hall. So, I mean, it was it was pretty hectic. I'd say, hey, did you go? Are you out there playing the Pokemon? Have you have you caught a Pikachu today? You know, so it's <laughs> it's neat. We're kind of a central hub. I can't tell you the number of accidents I almost had because of people playing Pokemon uh, when I was out on the biking trail. So, yes, I'm glad that phase is a little bit over. Hey, uh, but let me throw this one now to you, Anil, because I'm going to ask you about Bay City Rollers in a minute, Roy. So, um, but, okay. you know, Anil, you talk about transparency. You talk about a lot of how you do this. But I, we, we're getting some questions in here in terms of uh, they hear about Altoona using Archive Social. So can you cover real quickly how much it costs, how do people get started uh, using something like Archive Social? Sure, happy to. So it, we as a company are selling transparency by enabling compliance with these records laws. So we're very transparent personally at, our, at Archive Social where we put our pricing on our website. So for those of you who are interested in evaluating options, you can go to our website and click on the pricing tab. Uh, general guidance there is that uh, we've designed our pricing plans to suit 80% of agencies at a price point of under 5000 annual. Again, 80% of, of all public agencies in the United States at a price point of under 5000 annual. And the idea there is to try to fit most discretionary budgets uh, so that you can be proactive on this issue, give you fixed, predictable pricing. Now, our pricing can be a bit lower than that if you have an emerging social media presence, and it can go greater than that if you're a large city with a very active presence or, or even a small uh, city with an active presence. Uh, and you know, our, our approach is that what we do is we do almost all of our work with the public sector. Um, virtually everything we do is with the public sector. And so uh, our approach is to give uh, agencies the freedom to create new pages. Maybe you're ramping up Instagram today, maybe Pinterest tomorrow, another Facebook page, and really focus on the overall volume of content that you have uh, and give you an appropriate bucket so that you can grow your presence without paying something every time you add a page. Uh, but also have protection that's that's uh, relevant to the amount of social media content you have transpiring. And while uh, I'm going to go to the next question, but while your folks are doing that, uh, this is one slide I know we kind of glossed over, but want to make sure it's up there so you folks can take care of it. Um, that's another great service they provide. Uh, let me. We got time for just maybe one or two more questions. I want to get those in here real quick. And this actually is a very interesting one. I don't know that I've heard this one yet before. It comes from Sim or Kim Sokola, I believe, um, Michigan Municipal League. So um, this is to Roy and Ann. Does your social media policy cover people running for office or campaigning on your Facebook page? Do you have a policy? How would you handle something like that? 
Actually, I'm going to have to, I see that question, and it is a great question. I'm going to have to look at our terms of use policy. I do believe that uh, just off the top of my head, I would have the discretion to delete that um, because that's not what our page is set up to do. Um, but I, if it's not there, I, we're going to be adding it. <laughs> yeah, our social media group um, has has met and we've talked about uh, looking into our social media policy and again like everything else I mean that can be fluid as well and, and change with time with advancements. Well, well actually we've got time for one more and this is a good one because I have not heard this one before either we just want to get this in. Um, real quickly it's from Chris Johnson Minnesota Department of Health and Neil I believe I'm going to throw this one to you. you we can close it out with you. Everybody if you haven't heard about the Wayback Machine it's an internet archive you can go find stuff so uh, Chris is asking, how does the Wayback Machine play into the record-keeping, search, recall, recovery, deletion of social media? Is it successful? Is it a way to do things? Um, what are the pros and cons about that, Anil? Yeah, great question, Chris. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Wayback Machine and the, inter the folks at Internet Archive. Uh, we've met with them a few times. And uh, Wayback Machine is basically a, a service that, that snapshots your website every once in a while. Uh, and so free, it's a free online service where you can enter a URL. Uh, the short answer there, Chris, is that it can maybe get some kind of snapshot of a portion of your social media, but should not be used for social media archiving because of how dynamic uh, and real-time social media is. And if you think about something like Facebook, when you go to Facebook, when you scroll or you click on the comment threads, content sort of magically appears. It's really hard for web archiving technology like the Wayback Machine to replay that and, and, and basically mimic the scrolling and, and force that content to appear dynamically. So it'll get a very a partial capture of social. It's really nice for your website. Maybe, maybe even a solution for website archiving, although you can, you can maintain that yourself with your, with your own um, CMS technology. Uh, but for social, you really need something that talks to the social networks that's archiving technology that actively captures it, not on a, on a, on a low frequency like the Wayback Machine. Yeah, and folks, we have several more questions. Uh, don't worry, Megan Holland, State of Michigan, I have Archive Social going to get to you directly on that question that you have. But folks, we're going to have to be respectful of our one-hour commitment. We could go on, but we have to wrap it up here. So in closing, I want to thank our presenters, Ann Lean and Roy Atkinson from the city of only one Altoona, Wisconsin, uh, and I want a picture on Instagram of the Bay City Rollers, Roy. That is a requirement. So we want to thank them. We also want to thank Anil Chavla. Um, we can't do this without um, our partners from Archive Social. This is the way we put things on. Remember, folks, within 48 hours, you'll get a link. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you get a hold of us. You can reach me here. So what we want to do is thank you folks for being on the webinar today. This is great content. We hope you use it. And if you have any questions, get a hold of us. And we look forward to seeing you once again on another government technology event. Make sure you fill out the survey. We look forward to seeing you soon. Have Everybody have a great afternoon.